Okay, Assalamualaikum. So, we're going to continue our next example from uh, tutorial 5, part 2. So, the second part, 2.2, .2, we're going to do uh, a yarn chip, perch, beach, and natural breakwater. is also in two-dimensional. So, this case is an example of a beach of 60 uh, kilometer north of Perth, most commonly known as yarn chip lagoon. Many beaches in Western Australia, like Yanchip, are fronted by shallow reef. And here we are invis in investigating the effects uh, of the reef on, of the, on their morphodynamics. So we can work on the following assignment. So here I put the link to a YouTube. You can watch the YouTube. It's more like an introduction, or you can actually see what the Yanchip uh, beach uh, look like or the lagoon so uh, I can skip this one you can watch it at your own uh, time your own pace so the first one the first question we go to the folder examples young chip beach or based on the folder that I have given you the same folder and double click the file run model dot batch the simulation will start and will run about 15 minutes. So this is what the folder basically will look like, Yan Chip Beach. And here you have a list of it. You have John Swap, Params, Run Model, and XY.Grid. So here, the Run Model.Batch. And again, I have to remind you guys to check the path of your xbeach.exe because here what I'm doing is I put the folder inside uh, a different folder so I call software where I have the xbeach executable folder and then in that folder will be my uh, executable file so if you put this uh, this executable file somewhere else make sure you change the path the uh, into the correct path okay then you can run the model if you do cannot run the model please check again where do you call your executable file okay number two meanwhile inspect the bathymetry file either using rfg grid rf grid or quick in can you identify where is the origin coordinate for x and y this one, you just want to make sure in that file, where's the coordinates that are facing uh, seaward? The origin, the X origin and Y origin should be seaward, offshore, okay? And what is the depth in the lagoon? Is the reef enclosing the lagoon below or above the model? Initial water level. So if you open your grid here okay you can read the import the grid file okay and then you can view the grid lines and m and indices so if you maximize it you will see each cell are denotes denoted by their own x and y uh, numbering so from here you may know which uh, cell actually have the x origin and y origin so I'm not, I'm not going to do it here. You can explore it by yourself. And I think you guys already know how to do it. And then go for quick in. This one you want to know the depth. You import first the grid. That's why grid. Then second one you call the depth. Okay, for this case there are two depth file. 
that dot dep and reef dot dep so what is the difference between these two depth file so how do you want to know the difference between these two information the key uh, you may know what exactly these two depth file represent through the params so you can open the param first just want to check so inside the grid parameters under the grid parameters the depth file is equal to bad dot dep so what reef dot dep represent so you find ref dot dep dep under the morphology parameters you can find that it shows the ne layer what is ne underscore layer you can go to the xfish manual if you're still not sure what is an e layer and search it so an e layer meaning that to specify non erodible structure so what you want so what is, does this to mean the ped dot depth showing you the bathymetry depth while the reef dot depth meaning that it's the reef structure that's a non erodible it's just there so if you call back the depth file this is the depth file with the bathymetry meaning maximum depth of eight meter and the minus actually show the one that uh, beyond the mean sea level and again i rewind again why this one we can call it as a positive eight meter depth you can go back and see here it puts position down equal to one meaning that the depth is considered as positive so that is the reason why the maximum here eight here eight is eight meter mean sea level under the mean sea level is considered positive number and then you might want to do once again file import grid so it's a bit uh, tedious but it's okay you can do it slowly you can call the grid first and then you import the reef so this is the reef that you can actually see some reef are uh, up on the surface but this area or this structure reef are ne underscore layer which means it's non erodible so whatever happened uh, the erosion the sedimentation this thing will stick there it will cause the sediment uh, station to being deposited because of uh, it is non erodible okay so that answer number two and you can answer the rest of the question what is the depth in the lagoon in the reef enclosing the lagoon below or above the water the model initial water level you can observe through the legend on both bath depth and which got uh, reef depth next one what is the wave height at the boundary condition what is the difference between hatch m zero and h r m s root mean square Okay, to answer the wave height at the boundary condition, you can go back to your params.txt and look under the wave boundary condition parameters instead equal to joins. So you can go to your folder and find the joins swap.txt, edit with notepad, 
plus plus to hear all the information you need main angle gamma the uh, the s which means uh, how it expanding the angle okay so some of you might uh wondering what is the difference between a significant wave height and this wave height the average wave height and also the root mean square so you can google it i'm sure everyone know how to google significant wave height traditionally mm. as the mean wave height here's it trough to crest of the highest third of the wave okay but then uh, nowadays usually the equivalent to four times square root of the zero or the moment of the wave spectrum meaning that is uh, equal also to hm0 so that the difference in magnitude between the two definition is only a few percent can the significant wave height may thus refer to hm0 or hs no matter it's okay but then there's one another way significant wave height scientifically re scientifically represented as as h is can also be represented by statistic measure here the rms wave height where the thick square root of the average of all wave height equal to hs divided by 1.4 which mean h here hrms equal to 0 0.07 hmo which is 1 over 4 0 0.7 which is sama je lah so in case you guys are wondering what's the difference but for now uh, that's the difference you can just google it with height you can just take here lah. okay then number four moving on make an animation of the water level rms with height and velocity what happens in the lagoon this is the root mean square meaning that all wave height of the wave group that happened inside the simulation they take the rms wave height so inside here you can just go to quick plot and then you read the animation And then you can do the simulation of water level, run it for all, quick animate. See? Quick animate, you can observe the wave group happening here, meaning that it is not uh, stationary yeah, because uh, the other wave group. Of the John Swap, the wave spectrum. Okay, the water level increasing. And of course, they have two type. The type location is equal to two. So how do I know this? You can observe from the params. See here, wave spectrum boundary condition parameters, John Swap.txt, and then the other type.txt. Meaning, type dia pun berubah ikut masa dia okay so uh, okay you can do wave water level and then you can do wave height you can see monitor and then you can do the velocity okay so what interesting here in this three one two three simulation is uh, asked by the next question number five what type of computational grid used in the simulation? Ah, why do you actually can observe it is a bit like tilt, tilt to the left. While if you read it from the quick in, it's supposed to be like straight, right? Straight uh, 90 degree perpendicular. 
but here you can actually uh, observe that it, it tilt to the left. Why is that? Actually, it's, it's related to the computational grid used in the simulation. So at what angle does the domain rotate with respect to east? First, you have to identify, is it a nautical or Cartesian? So I leave it that to you guys to try to extract that info from the params of text. Okay, and then next one, number six, make an animation of cumulative sedimentation and erosion. What happens in the lagoon? Okay, for this part, I want you guys to identify it by parts. Look at what I've do, uh, what I've done here. You can just see this is the the reef, the non erodible layer. Now you can actually see which part uh, being uh, the sediment uh, the is deposited. The sediment is deposited, and there are some part is being eroded. And you can uh, conclude from that. Okay, and then next one, number seven. How is the lagoon affected by the mean water level? How many numbers of tidal signal is specified? Increase or decrease the mean water level condition? Run the model again, maybe for a short time by reducing T-stop. How are circulation and sediment transport affected? So if you look at this, how do you want to know the mean water level? Go to the params. This is the water level, ZSO file. The ZSO file is equal to type.txt. So we opened the type.txt. Okay, so the type.txt have three columns. The first column is the time, first time, second time. Second and the third one is uh, depending on the value of the tight location. So is this the, the values, the length? So because we have two, because looking at the, looking at the tight location, we have two. So what does the two means? You can refer to into the speech manual. So uh, tight location two meaning that two time varying water level signal. Uh, okay. Specify the offshore boundary and the second on landward boundary or the first signal is in post on the left lateral boundary and the second on the right lateral boundary. Kalau ada poor review ni. Ni you can check in the X block. So go back to the here. Actually see is uh, 1.3 meter water level. So you can change the water level here increase or decrease and run the model again for a shorter time by reducing t-stop so what is the current t-stop here you can check the current t-stop where is it 16,200 second equal to how many hours how many days I think you guys might know that so from that you can make a conclusion what do you find from reducing or increasing the number of water level condition? What does it the effect to the sediment transport, the sedimentation? It's not been done by some of my students. And of course, there is an additional assignment. A, reef are very rough. What happens in the model when the friction is increased? Reduce values of C and increase value of FW. We run the model. What do you observe? What is a C? You can also find it in. Uh, this is a chassis. 
Cheesy or cheesy. Is under the 2.5 bad friction and 6.2.5 bad friction and viscosity. So, uh, this number, but you have to remember you do not change the number according to what you, uh, according to what you think is, is good. You have to make sure, uh, for example, you go here bad friction okay default chassis range you have to know the range there's a default value in everything okay chassis you find the chain okay you get rid of c go back to c Here put 55 with parameter FW 0 0.03. So you go back to the manual and search for the number. How, what is the default value and the range of the value used in order for you not to put the value too big. Because mm. here is put the typical chase value is in the order of 55. So maybe you can uh, put it a bit lower. Because here is now the, actually stated how much is the range. So we can put FW. FW is the uh, short wave friction. Is between 0, 0.0 to 1.0. You can try that one and last but not least is with current interaction switch on rerun the model with the current with current switch on compare the output with the model you ran previously how much effect do you see on the morphology WCI with current interaction So they just need the wave current interaction will result in a feedback of current on the wave propagation. So you can turn it on or turn it off and you can compare the result. What does it have the effect to your simulation? Yeah, I think that's all and you can put the conclusion. Try to do some uh, research a bit and I'm going to read uh, all your comparison and conclusion and hope to see a very good uh, justification and conclusion. Thank you. That's all for tutorial 5. Thank you very much.